Hello and welcome to First English. This is our worship service for August 9th. And I um, just wanted to give you a shot that there's a few people here. <laughs> it's hot, so um, we're going to begin in just a moment. All right, thank you very much, everybody, for joining us for worship this morning. And um, we, again, we'll have communion, and you should have gotten a little communion packet. You can hold that until that point in the service. So both in person and online, the Holy Spirit calls us together as the people of God. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And here's the tricky part. You can't share peace the way we usually do, but you can wave, send a long distance kiss, something like that. <laughs> Now, since our, our lesson is from the book of Ruth, the first song is for all the faithful women using the verse that's attributed to the story of Ruth. So feel free to hum along. Um, we would rather you don't sing. If you um, want to just hum along or just look at the words, that's great. Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And now a litany of hope. Since this is also Immigration Sunday, makes sense when you know the story of Ruth, that since um, her, the reason why she got married was because Elimelech and Naomi had to go away. They were immigrants for a while, then Ruth became the immigrant in Bethlehem when she went back to Bethlehem with Naomi. So this is Immigration Sunday. So we have a litany of hope. Please respond with the parts that are in bold print. You can speak softly, use your inside voice. Lord, you send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. Help us to see your image in the many peoples of this earth. For families separated at the border, teach us to provide protection and hope. For members of our community who suffer fear and isolation, Give us hearts filled with generosity and welcome. For refugees who long for home, fill us with grace to embrace them as sisters and brothers. Lord, you send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. Be with those who flee poverty, persecution, war, and violence. Be with all who learn a new language and start a new enterprise. Make a new friend. Let us celebrate the many gifts they bring for the whole human family brought together in your love. Lord, 
you send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. And now we're going to pray the prayer of the day together. Again, please pray um, silently or softly. Let us pray together. Holy God, we pray for those who have traveled from other places to find a new home. Show us ways to be fed and care for those we love through your bountiful hand. Amen. Um, our first reading is Psalm 85, which we're going to read responsibly, verses 8 through 13. You read the part in bold print, again, softly, or to yourself. I will listen to what the Lord God is saying, for you speak peace to your faithful people and to those who turn their hearts to you. Truly, your salvation is very near to those who fear you, that your glory may dwell in our land. Steadfast love and faithfulness have met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Faithfulness shall spring up from the earth, and righteousness shall look down from heaven. The Lord will indeed grant prosperity, and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness shall go before the Lord, and shall prepare for God a pathway. Our reading is a little bit long, but it's all important. It's from the book of Ruth chapters two and four assorted verses. Um, just to give you a little bit of context, Ruth was willing to be a foreigner in Bethlehem, which is Naomi's hometown. In order to show her loving care for her mother-in-law, Ruth gleaned food and found favor among Naomi's people. We begin with chapter two, verse one. Now Naomi had a kinsman in her, on her husband's side, a prominent rich man of the family of Elimelech, whose name was Boaz. And Ruth, the Moabite, said to Naomi, let me go to the field and glean among the ears of grain, behind someone in whose sight I may find favor. She said to her, go, my daughter. So she went. She came and gleaned in the field behind the reapers. As it happened, she came to the part of the field belonging to Boaz, who was of the family of Elimelech. Just then, Boaz came from Bethlehem, and he said to the reapers, the Lord be with you. And they answered, the Lord bless you. Then Boaz said to his servant who is in charge of the reapers, to whom does this young woman belong? The servant whom, who was in charge of the reapers answered, she's the Moabite who came back with Naomi from the country of Moab. She said, please let me glean and gather among the sheaves behind the reapers. So she came and she's been on her feet from early this morning until now without resting even for a moment. Then Boaz said to Ruth, listen now my daughter, do not go to glean in another field or leave this one, but keep close to my young women. Keep your eyes on the field that is being reaped and follow behind them. I have ordered the young men not to bother you. If you get thirsty, go to the vessels and drink from what the young men have drawn. Then she fell prostrate with her face on the ground and she said to him, why have I found such favor in your sight that you should take notice of me when I'm a foreigner? But Boaz answered her, all that you have done for your mother-in-law since the death of your husband has been fully told me. And how you left your father and mother in your native land and came to a people that you did not know before. May the Lord reward you for your deeds and may you have a full reward from the Lord, the God of Israel, under whose wings you have come for refuge. Then she said, may I continue to find favor in your sight, my Lord, for you have comforted me and spoken kindly to your servant, even though I'm not one of your servants. At mealtime, Boaz said to her, come here and eat some of this bread and drip your, dip your morsel in the sour wine. So she sat beside the reapers and he heaped up for her some parched grain. She ate until she was satisfied and she had some left over. When she got up to glean, Boaz instructed his young men, let her glean even among the standing sheaves and do not reproach her. You must also pull out some handfuls for her from the bundles and leave them for her to glean and do not rebuke her. So she gleaned in the field until evening, and then she beat at what she had gleaned, and it was about an ephah of barley. She picked it up and came into town, and her mother-in-law saw how much she had gleaned. Then she took out and gave her what was left over after she herself had been satisfied. Her mother-in-law said to her, where did you glean today, and where have you worked? Blessed be the man who took notice of you. She said, she, so she told her mother-in-law with whom she had worked and said, the man, the name of the man with whom I work today is Boaz. 
Then Naomi said to her daughter-in-law, Blessed be he by the Lord, whose kindness has not forsaken the living or the dead. Naomi also said to her, The man is a relative of ours, one of our nearest kin. And we jump to chapter 4. Then Boaz said to the elders and all the people, Today you are witnesses that I have acquired from the hand of Naomi all that belonged to Elimelech and all that belonged to Chilion and Malon. I also have acquired the Ruth the Moabite, the wife of Malon, to be my wife, to maintain the dead man's name on his inheritance, in order that the name of the dead may not be cut off from his kindred and from the gate of his native place. Today you are witnesses. Then all the people who were at the gate, along with the elders, said, We are witnesses. May the Lord make the woman who is coming into your house like Rachel and Leah, who together built up the house of Israel. May you produce children in Ephrathah and bestow a name in Bethlehem. And through the children of the Lord will give you by this young woman, may the house be like the house of Perez, whom Tamar bore to Judah. So Boaz took Ruth and she became his wife and they came together. The Lord made her conceive and she bore a son. Then the women said to Naomi, Blessed be the Lord who has not left you this day without next of kin, and may his name be renowned in Israel. He shall be to you a restorer of life and a nourisher of your old age, for your daughter-in-law, whom loves you, who is more to you than seven sons, has borne him. Then Naomi took the child and laid him in her bosom and became his nurse. The women of the neighborhood gave him a name, saying, A son has been born to Naomi. They named him Obed. He became the father of Jesse, the father of David. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So we all know the world right now is challenging in so many ways. We are still facing this pandemic nationwide and it's not getting any better, especially as clusters of people are ignoring the need to distance or wear masks. And during this pandemic, we have this upcoming presidential election that might require mail-in voting for the sake of safety. And we find out that the mail delivery is less reliable right now. Congress cannot agree on ways to support states and businesses and people without jobs. We have intelligence that indicates a foreign government is trying to influence the election. And because of all of this, we have so many unknowns in our lives. For instance, our very own First English Lutheran Preschool has done so much work to open up in September. They've, they're going to have smaller and fewer and more distance classes, but they know very well that after all of this work, it may come to pass that they cannot open up at all for in-person classes. They just don't know. Millions of schools and students and parents are asking themselves if the schools will be meeting, when will the restaurants and sports events and theaters open up? When can places of worship go back to singing together and shaking hands and having coffee hours? Again, we just don't know. It'd be nice to have a crystal ball right about now and predict the future, but this is the life we live right now. These are stressful times. And responding to stress and crises requires resilience. We need to talk more about resilience in our world today. We are facing corporate trauma we are grieving the loss of our life routines and the loss of relative security. We can't ignore it, and so we've got to figure out how to face it and go forward. One of the books that I'm reading right now is called Surviving Survival by Lawrence Gonzalez, and it's about people who have done well after surviving great traumas. And according to the book, one of the things we can do to hasten healing is to follow three basic steps, and they seem pretty clear when you think about it. Number one, Devote yourself to something you love. Number two, do something for someone who needs you. And number three, be with people you care about. Now for all of the times I have read this story about Ruth and Naomi, and it, it's a bit longer than what I read, even though I read quite a bit, um, I don't think I've ever really seen it as an exercise in resilience, but that's exactly what it is. It's a story of famine that compelled Naomi and her husband Elimelech to take their family to Moab in the first place. Then, when the men of the household all died, that meant the future and the protection of the women died as well. They had to adjust to a new normal, a normal that they didn't ask for, that they didn't want. They needed resiliency. 
Now we all know the most popular verses from Ruth are about her pledging to stay with her mother-in-law. After Ruth's husband Malon died, she told Naomi, where you go, I will go. Where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people and your God, my God. So Ruth went with Naomi to Bethlehem where Ruth was the stranger, Ruth was the foreigner, Ruth was the immigrant. She was the outsider in a Jewish land. And remember all of the loss that she had already experienced and she was trying to be resilient by doing something for someone who needed her and being with someone she cared about. And as you recall, that's two of the, the things that I was just telling you about that can build resiliency. But we'll hear more about that part of the story later. But basically, Ruth devoted herself to the care of her husband's mother to be part of her people to worship her God even though Ruth was a Moabite I'm just gonna take a step back here because sometimes like Moabite what is that uh, you might remember that Moabites are shunned by Jews for a number of reasons including lack of hospitality and an origin story that involved an, a drunken incestuous affair so like not the very best start of a people um, the Moabites were to be avoided Deuteronomy chapter 23 says, no Ammonite or Moabite or any of their descendants for 10 generations may be admitted to the assembly of the Lord. But even though Ruth was a Moabite, even though she was a stranger in Bethlehem and they could have shunned her, the villagers saw her love for her mother-in-law, her only family member. They saw her hard work gleaning in the fields, being on her feet a whole day long. Now the Hebrew word to describe this part of Ruth's story is hesed, which means loving kindness in action. Now we're used to hearing about when there's something bad that happens, someone says, oh, thoughts and prayers. That's not hesed. Uh, hesed means actually doing something to offer assistance. So we could say that Ruth had hesed for Naomi by gleaning the fields to help feed her. We could say that Boaz had said for Ruth by giving her a favored position and bringing, um, making sure she could glean more food. Despite all of her losses, Ruth was able to bounce back and bring hope not just to herself, but also to her mother-in-law. But as we remember Ruth's outsider status, that makes it even more amazing that this happened. This book is not just about being resilient, but also welcoming the other. Now, scholars believe, we know that a lot of the Bible was, was shared orally. It was shared as just stories that were told. But we believe this was written down about the time of the Persian Empire, when all of a sudden there were a lot of strangers. During the previous empire, a lot of the, the Jewish people were in exile in Babylon. And during the Persian Empire, they were welcome to come back. So all of a sudden, there's people around that you don't recognize, people that look different, who are other. And so this story of Ruth may have been a way to remind everyone that even though people don't look like you, even though they're not from here, they can still be good people, hardworking people, family loving people. And so that's part of the reason today is Immigration Sunday. We think of people who have come to the United States looking for hope. In Matthew 25 when Jesus says, I was a stranger and you welcomed me. It's a story of separating the sheep and the goats. And we've come to understand this as Jesus himself saying, if you show hospitality to strangers, it's like showing hospitality to me. Lutheran Immigration and Refugee Services has been welcoming strangers for over 80 years, since 1939. Many of these strangers have been through their own traumas and crises, and they come here willing to work hard and to find a home. When a young boy from El Salvador came to the United States in 1980, he didn't immediately find welcome. He was often rejected because of the color of his skin, his culture, his Spanish accent. He had to leave his native land because he had served as an altar boy and assistant to Archbishop Oscar Romero, who had just been assassinated. It was not safe for Pedro Portillo to stay, but he was resilient. He made it his life goal to educate people, to understand immigrants, and so he decided to become a minister a Lutheran minister. Pastor Pedro Portillo works in Irving, Texas, and he helps new immigrants from Latin America, Africa, and Asia. So the book of Ruth can remind us that the other may need our welcome, may need our chesed. 
The book of Ruth is about facing tough times together with someone that we care about and moving forward in a time of adversity. So that's a lot to do with what we're going through right now. The book of Ruth is about God presenting us with hope beyond our expectations. Who could have imagined that two childless widows would find a husband, a baby, a future? The twist at the end is this is not just a great story about two destitute ladies finding hope. It's part of the biblical genealogy. The Moabite outsider Ruth, this childless widow, would be the great grandma of King David himself. Ruth's story is read by our Jewish neighbors during the Hebrew festival of Shavuot, a grain harvest festival, and it is also related to the giving of the Ten Commandments. Ruth reminds us to treasure a harvest, but also how to live the Ten Commandments, live into it with Hesed. Especially in our world right now, a world of global pandemic and racial inequality and economic struggles, especially right now with all of the questions of tomorrows and the grieving that we continue to do about our losses, we need to remind ourselves to show resilience and character. We are going through a tough time. So do something you care about. Care for others in need. Spend time with people you love. What the world needs now is not just love, but has said. What can we do to help our neighbors, our communities, our loved ones, ourselves? Let's live into that baptismal verse. Let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Be that light to immigrants and strangers. Be that light to the sick and imprisoned. Be that light to the community as we venture together into the unknowns of tomorrow. Amen. And there's a couple of questions just to ponder about, think about later in the day perhaps. Um, so there are some qualities that Boaz noticed about Ruth. Remember the servant said, hey, look at this woman, look what she's doing. And he noticed uh, certain qualities about her. How are you seeking to be like Ruth in our community during this pandemic? How are you stepping up? And number two, as a foreigner, Ruth was considered an outsider, but Boaz welcomed her and took care of her. Why is it so important for refugees and immigrants to have some support? And how can you help? So there's just a few things to think about. We continue on with the Apostles' Creed. If you have your bulletin with you, it's page 8. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And now we offer up our prayers of intercession. After each prayer, you're going to hear, Lord, in your mercy, and your response is hear our prayer, which again, you can say softly. And I'm gonna have a quiet time because I know there's so many prayers that we, um, we have in our hearts. And so I'll leave a quiet time so you could offer up those own, your own prayers. Confident of your care and helped by the Holy Spirit, we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. For those who venture to new lands and those faced with welcoming strangers. Give courage in the midst of storms. May we follow Christ wherever he leads. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the well-being of your creation, protect waterways, forests, lands, and wildlife from exploitation and abuse. Help the human family endeavor to sustain and be sustained by the resources of your land. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the safety of essential workers in our hospital stores utility workers and first responders. Bless and protect those who are working for the common good. Be with individuals and families adjusting to this summer of distancing. Watch over those who protest for equality and the police who watch over them. Open the ears of leaders so that all may have the opportunity to live abundantly and sustainably. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the nations and their leaders, and so nations in conflict know the peace that is the fruit of justice and that justice is the path of peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those in need, 
Everyone who calls upon your name will be saved. Accompany all those who are lonely. Hear the voices of those who cry out in anguish and support those who face evictions or are frustrated in their search for an affordable place to live. We pray for those suffering this day, especially those on our prayer list. Jack, Alice, Frankie, Judy, Tim, Andrew, Catherine, Dolores, David, Christine, Carol, Richard, and John. We also pray for our friends, Keith, Susan, William, Rochelle, Helen, Ron, Jody and Audrey, Jay, Mary, Penny, Bradley, Charles, Chantal, Kiever, Danielle, Russ, Norma, Marcia, Marcia, Bill, Frank, T, Gary. And we remember the family and friends of Jade Coffey, who died tragically at a very young age when she was unable to get medical care. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the city of Baltimore and our online mission field, for our leaders, Donald, Larry, and Jack, and our bishops, Elizabeth and Bill, for those who seek healing through the 12-step programs usually offered in our coffee house, for our prayer partner, First Lutheran Church in Ewan, Michigan. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our congregation. You have gathered us today, both in person and online, as your people, and we thank you for this gift. We pray for those who are new to this community, for students and teachers preparing for a new school year, and those struggling with unexpected hardship. We also lift up in prayer those special concerns that we have now silently. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give you thanks, O oh God, for the saints of the whole church from all times and places, and for the saints in our lives and in our community whom you have gathered to yourself. Today, we especially remember the family and friends of those who were killed in Baltimore in July. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the certain hope that nothing can separate us from your love, we offer these prayers to you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And at this point, we would normally be doing offering. We're not passing anything right now during the pandemic. Um, but there are different ways in your bulletin that you can give, including um, there's a box if you brought something. But uh, we're grateful for all of the support we continue to get. And now our offering prayer. Let us pray. We are blessed to be a blessing to others. Holy God, help us to share what we have and accept what we give in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And now we continue on to the communion part of our service. And so I'll invite you to get your, um, your pre-filled cup ready. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave and by his glorious resurrection open to us the way of everlasting life. I invite you now to raise up your pre-filled cup. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And now gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, we pray for all who are in need with the prayer that Jesus taught us. And now we're going to pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Christ invites us all to this holy feast and all are welcome. You don't have to be a member of this congregation. You don't have to be a Lutheran. The gifts of God are free. Come, taste and see that the Lord is good. And I invite you now to open up the first plastic container, the first plastic top, to reveal your wafer. And if you needed gluten-free, there, there are gluten-free wafers at the registration table in case you didn't get them. The body of Christ given for you. I 
I now invite you to open what I call the pop top part, um, the, the foil part, and this is grape juice, the blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. Let us pray together. God of wonder, in Jesus we behold the light of the world come near. As you have come among us now, send us out in joy, hastening to share the good news of your love. We ask this in the name of Jesus, through the Spirit dwelling among us, now and forever. Amen. Um, just like to remind everybody, we have announcements on our Facebook page and on our website, so there's lots of different ways. If you'd like to give back, there are charities that we are saying, you know, they could use help, they could use your physical help, they could use your monetary help. So I um, encourage you to go to First English website or First English Facebook page. And now the commissioning, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. And our last song is When Our Song Says Peace. And I guess we're singing, it says all three verses. I think we're just going to do one verse. you. Thanks be to God. Thank you for joining us this morning.